What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video and today we are in the studio but we are behind the decks and the reason we're behind the decks today is because I want to talk about what I've learned so far on my journey to switching over to using Algorithms DJ Pro for my software and in my journey to figure out what controller I want to use for um, doing events this year. So as you've been, if you've watched the channel, you know that I've been experimenting with the Reloop Mixon 8. Um, I worked with that for a couple of weeks, almost a month, and had issues with it. I had to send it back, got a replacement, still had issues with it. It was giving me problems with Serato. It was giving me problems with uh, DJ Pro on the Mac, DJ Pro on the iPad. Just, um, I just couldn't get away from the issue. So I, I sent that back. I got a, I'm getting a refund for that. So that is the end of that saga. Um, previously, I had been using my Pioneer Rev 1, which is a great controller, especially for the price. That mixer, that controller cost about 270 I think, right now. And I got a great case for it. I got it hooked up, and it's really convenient for me to use, which is why I used it probably 90% of my gigs last year. But the problem with it is it's really small. Um, it's limited on the inputs and the outputs. And... It just it just does not fit my workflow. It does, you don't know what the platters are doing because they don't have any indicators on the platters. They don't spin. Um, it just it it gets the job done, but it could be a lot better. So that's when I started thinking, looking at the controllers and mixers that are available to work with DJ Pro and Serato because I'm flipping back and forth. You know, I'm not fully converted over to DJ Pro yet. Um, but I started thinking and looking, and then I realized that the best mixer or controller that I have is right in front of me. It's the Rain 70. The Rain 70 is a great mixer. I've had it for a couple of years now. I did go back and forth with Rain uh, with some issues that I had with my original Rain 70, and I had to get repairs and get stuff sent back. I was having problems with the screens and all kinds of stuff like that. But Rain eventually sorted it out, got me a working mixer, and it's been working great for. Uh, almost two years now and I've got no complaints about it. I love this mixer. It's my favorite DJ mixer. In addition to that, when I bought this mixer shortly afterwards, I bought these Reloop 7000 MK2 turntables and I love them. I have a pair of techniques that I've had probably over 20 years now and I had a pair before that, but I wanted, they were, everything was used. I've always had used turntables, but when I bought these, I bought these brand new and I have no complaints. I love them. I did not go with the 8000s or the 8000 MK2s with the buttons and stuff because that just requires you to hook up another set of USB cables. And I don't really need all those buttons down there because the Rain 70 has all the buttons that I need and they're laid out exactly how I'm comfortable working with them. Um, one of the things I didn't like about the Mixon 8 was the fact that the performance pads were down below the platters. So that's kind of not how I'm used to DJing anymore. I haven't really DJed like that ever since I got rid of my SR2, which was quite a while ago. So I'm used to having my performance pads up top by my um, channel faders. And that's what the Rain 70 has. The Rain 70 works really well with DJ Pro and most of the functions work exactly as they're labeled. They work the same as they are with Serato. There's a couple of differences, and I'm going to discuss those very briefly. Um, one of the biggest differences between using this mixer with Serato DJ versus Algorithm DJ Pro is the fact that the transport button uh, doesn't work as it does on Serato. On DJ Pro, the transport button it doesn't do anything. Actually, it does. It opens up the stems mode or the neural mix mode and it allows you to um, activate or you can solo or mute different parts of the track, different stems. Um, the other thing that doesn't work as the same on uh, DJ Pro as it does with Serato is the screen. Now, one thing about screens with Algorithm DJ Pro is pretty much they don't work on the controllers and mixers that have screens that give you information from the software um, onto the mixer or controller. They just don't work. The only screen I know that does work is the screen on the Mixon 8 Pro. It does give you all the information. It does give you a track indicator, uh, a, a record 
position indicator. So that was a plus for the Mixon 8. But with the Arrange 70, the screen does work, but only it works for the mixer, the functions of the mixer. So the information you see on the screen is information from the mixer itself. So you can choose what effect you have uh, selected. You can choose between your effects. It will show those effects. It will not pull the BPM from the software. So you have to use the tap button to tap out your BPM. Not a problem. It works just fine. Um, what else is different? The only other thing I can really think of that's different between the screen, the transport button, I would say also, um, well, I'm not sure, really. I think that's really the, the two biggest differences. Once you get over those differences, everything else pretty much works the same. Um, your queuing, um, oh, the other thing that's different other than your screen and your transport button are your secondary layers on these modes. So your hot cube, if you hit it once, you do get your cue points. You hit it a second time, you do get the option to do the pitch play, just like you do with Serato. But when you go to your save loops, you don't have a secondary function. Your loop roll does have a secondary function. Your sampler does not have a secondary function, but your transport does have a secondary function. So I mean, when I say secondary function, meaning if you double tap the mode, then it will go into another mode that you can use. And those secondary modes, you can custom MIDI map them. So maybe you want to have a more um, robust uh, neural mix uh, separation on your pads. You can program, you can MIDI map that within DJ Pro. For me, the only things I really had to MIDI map on this mixer to use with DJ Pro were my parameter buttons. Parameter buttons, I never use them on any controller so or mixer. So what I did was I made my left parameter button on both decks, I made those be instant instrumental. And on the right parameter button on both decks, I made those be instant acapellas. Now, the other thing you have to consider when you use this setup is how are you going to control your vinyl or control your music. In my case, I started out using the algorithm um, vinyl, the DJ Pro control vinyl, the official stuff right here. You can order them online and they work really, really well. You can also use regular Serato um, control vinyl with DJ Pro, it will read that. But I like using the DJ Pro vinyl because it doesn't just have the control signal, but when you flip the record over, it's separated into three different parts. You have the main version, the instrumental, and the acapella. And this will happen for any song that you put on, well, as long as it's not streamed from Apple Music, Tidal, or any of the streaming platforms. But you can use Neuromix to get the full version. You move the needle over to the middle, you get the uh, instrumental, you move it towards the end, you get the acapellas. It's a really great feature, it's really cool. Reminds me of the old school 12 inch vinyl we used to get that would have your clean, dirty, instrumental acapella, you know, and you have that. But because we like to keep things kind of futuristic, what we did was, or what I did was, I got phase. I bought me a phase box and now I'm able to at the moment, I just have to use the RCA cables to plug them into my left and, or my deck one and deck two and make sure they're set to, I believe in this instance, they're set to CD instead of if I had my turntables hooked up, they'd be set to phono, but I've got the input set to CD line and I'm using phase to control my um, MP3s with, within the software works excellent it works great i actually had a chance to use this uh at a it wasn't a gig it was doing i was doing a guest spot on our college radio georgia tech radio wrek atlanta's longest running hip-hop show i was doing i'm a one of the guest djs in the rotation and i did a show um just past thursday where um, i did my regular mix but then i also had to um, handle beats for some MCs that were in the studio that day and they did some freestyle sessions and I was able to use Neural Mix. That was a great thing, being able to have instrumentals of every song 
available in my library and to be able to rock those for a freestyle session. That was really, really great. I loved it. Every song I threw it on, hit that instant instrumental and just rock the beats and no one was the wiser. No one could figure out that I was just using a stems, neural mix to um, separate and get an instrumental. So the more I use this out at uh, different events, the more I realize this is the way to go. Um, I'm even starting to use uh, the laptop version, the Serato of Algorithm DJ Pro. Uh, normally when I first started out, I was really pushing hard to go all iPad. And I still do use the iPad a lot, but um, the laptop or the app on the laptop works great. And I love it because it allows me to use my Serato crates. That's the one really cool thing about the uh, laptop version is that it automatically pulls in your crates from Serato. It will pull in your crate, your playlist from iTunes or music, um, in addition to all your streaming platforms. So it's very handy. With the iPad, I have to manually move my crates over like I showed you in a previous video. So that is definitely a positive that using the app what the laptop has going for it. I'm still going to keep the laptop, I mean the iPad around, but um, I'll be having to choose it on a, a gig by gig basis to see, you know, which works best. I mean, they both work great, but sometimes I just need my uh, iPad to get in and get out and I don't have to pull out a big laptop. Uh, sometimes I need to have my laptop because I need that, you know, comfort that I need that reliability or that confidence that knowing that my laptop's there I got everything with me and so I'm really loving that it's really um I think the way I'm going to go this year I do have uh road cases for my um turntables they're a little old a little heavy I think there's the newer stuff is a little bit lighter so I may look into that and I also have um you've probably seen this kind of road case before but it holds a mixer and one deck and it allows you to, if you like using instant doubles, you can use that to, you know, get by fine. I've, I've been an instant double user ever since I discovered it. Um, even when I had my Range 12, sometimes I would go to the club and just have my mixer and one Range 12 and instant double all throughout the night. And it worked perfectly fine. So I think, I think this year I'm going to try to start out using both decks. You know, some gigs, it may be overkill to have both decks, so I might just pull out one deck in the mixer or if it's a really small hit it and quit it type gig i'm going to pull out the pioneer uh rev one until i can find a controller that uh can replace it but the rev one has a, a lot of good features and has one thing that going for it that other controllers don't have and that is the fact that it is usb powered so when i use the pioneer rev one my ipad is control is powering the uh controller or my laptop would be controlling or powering the controller so that's a really cool thing about it you know one thing i really really was excited about for the mix sign 8 was the fact that the mix sign 8 could charge your um ipad that i think that's a great addition to have that USB C connection will charge your ipad i, I was really excited ab about that but now it looks like go i'm going in reverse and i'm going to be um using a controller that is charged by the iPad versus the controller charging the iPad. But that's when I do use the Rev1 for, I'm going for like a 80 to 90% of this year, I wanna use my mixer with my turntables and phase. Phase has been really, really great for me. I know some people have been discussing that they've been having issues with phase disconnecting or there being issues with batteries or even mine has a little bit of a crack there i'm not sure that how that crack got there but you can't even see it but um if you go onto the phase uh facebook group there are people that have discussed it and showed up close pictures of the um, fracture that shows seems to happen in the same place so far it has not affected my phase so i'm going to continue to use it and i mean phase isn't cheap phase costs about 400 dollars. it's not cheap um I can't remember how much my first Serato box was. I think it was like six, six or seven hundred. I can't remember. Maybe six. But um, it's kind of like the similar, a similar investment, but it's totally worth it. I wish I would have got the, the four pack, you know, because there have been some long gigs I've done where I thought the battery was going to die, but it haven't had the battery die on me at any gigs yet.
So this is the way to go. I'm really hoping that eventually algorithm does have native support for phase. So I don't have to use my RCA cables to hook up. I can just hook up the USB like I do when I'm using Serato DJ. But anyway, I think that will be long enough of a video. I don't want to talk too much and bore you, but this is just an update as to where I am. I no longer have the Mixon uh, 8. I took that, sent that back. I'm currently just going to rock with the uh, Rain 70 using a DJ Pro and my turntables. And I think the next video I do probably will be a more of a deep dive into how I have it set up uh, to use uh, the Rain 70 with DJ Pro. I had a lot of people ask me online or in the comments of other videos, how, do they, how does it work? Because they have one and it's not working for them. And I got to tell you, it's just been plug and play for me. Honestly, I plugged it in on both the laptop and the iPad and it just worked with uh, DJ Pro. I didn't have to update anything or make any settings or change anything. It just, I didn't have to configure anything to get it to work. It just worked. So the next video I do will be a little bit of a deep dive into it. I'll show you how I hook it up, um, what my, well, look into the software, see what my settings are, and maybe you can compare it to see if yours are a little bit different if you had questions about using the 70 with um, DJ Pro. But for now, I'm going to sign off. I just wanted to get this video out here. I'm trying to be consistent. I think we've had a great year as far as me putting out content. Uh, I know at the beginning of the year, I was contemplating doing like a video a day. That's definitely not happening. <laughs> it's overkill. But um, I think I can manage to get one or two videos out a week to give you guys updates as to what's going on. So hope you hope you like these videos hopefully you can like subscribe comment share um, discuss in the comments what you've been using what works best for you have you tested other um, equipment let me know we can keep it talking we can keep a conversation going and uh, discuss it and also once again i think i mentioned it earlier but i'll say it again big shout out to everybody who has um, commented or inboxed me uh, sent me emails describing their um experience with this equipment um, letting me know that i'm not alone sometimes these videos are just vent sessions for me to vent and you know my frustration sometimes it does get frustrating when you're trying to find the best equipment to accomplish your job and when you run into roadblocks it can be a little um, disappointing and frustrating but when you hear other people say hey you're not alone i've experienced the same thing these are the steps i did to either fix it or i either gave up Hey, that's what I'm kind of doing with these videos, just documenting my journey as a DJ. Um, and in these videos, my journey as a DJ going over to DJ Pro. So I appreciate everybody, all the comments. And yes, I'm still doing photo booth stuff as well. I know I haven't had a photo booth video in a while, but I'm actually, I've got some orders for some photo booths. So I'm building some and I'll show you where I'm at with that as well. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys around for the next video. Peace.